The Wabash Valley Correctional Facility in Indiana is home to 2,100 inmates. Fifty-three of them are children under the age of 18, sentenced as adults. Do not be judgmental. They've already been to a judge and a jury. That's not our job to be judgmental of what their crimes are. Although the prisoners at Wabash have been sentenced for crimes ranging from burglary to murder, there are some things they hold in common. Many come from the same cities and, in some cases, the same family. I think other people in society, and especially around my county and stuff, probably think of me as, you know what I mean? a cold blood murder or whatever. But, uh, you know, if they knew me or got a chance to talk to me, they'd know different. My brother, I just hope he forgives me and stuff too, so. We've always been pretty close. Uh, he's really a quiet person, stays himself. He usually gets along with everybody. He draws and writes a lot. That's really all he does. Two years ago, Brothers Blade and Benny Reed were sentenced to Wabash for a burglary that went horribly awry. Even though both boys were originally placed in the Wabash Youth Unit, they've always been kept separate. Once Benny turned 18, he moved into the adult population at Wabash, while Blade remains in the Youth Unit. We don't see each other because he's in the juvenile dorm. And I think about him every once in a while, you know what I mean? wonder how he's doing, hoping he's staying out of trouble and stuff, so. The Reed brothers have been trying for two years to get a face-to-face -face meeting, but kids under the age of 18 at Wabash must be kept separate from the adult population, so a visit is all but impossible. At times, it's difficult, but it really ain't nothing we can do to change it. Besides, stay out of trouble and hope they give us a visit. The Reed brothers' life in prison could not be more different than their rural upbringing in the hills of Brown County, Indiana. It's all country out there. I spent most of my time outdoors, just fishing, hunting. I usually stayed to myself, other than my family. Always been a shy person, so. Honestly, I wouldn't think I would have been here, because I just didn't ever think of them waving a 15-year-old. I don't know, I try not to think about it. Blade Reed was just 13 years old when he and his 16-year-old brother rode their bikes to a neighbor's house, intending to steal beer. According to police reports, Benny pulled out a gun after entering the victim's home. The victim had a gun of his own and fired on Benny, hitting him in the arm. Benny shot back, killing the 84-year-old man. He then directed Blade to cut his wife's throat. She lived, but no one's life would ever be the same. Both Blade and Benny were waived to adult court Benny pled guilty to murder and aggravated battery. He was sentenced to 60 years. Blade's case was more complicated. Court records revealed Blade was the victim of physical and sexual abuse when he was an infant. Psychiatric reports concluded Blade's mental maturity was that of a 10-year-old. After months of highly charged hearings, Blade pled guilty to robbery, resulting in serious injury, and one juvenile account of aggravated battery. He was sentenced to 30 years in prison. Neither boy had ever had a brush with the law prior to the crime. During the crime, there was, you know what I mean, a lot of panic, fear, and I was intoxicated and stuff too, though. Things just got out of hand, you know what I mean? Like, I went to sleep, and the next moment I woke up, I had to remember for a second if it really happened, you know what I mean? I didn't know if it was all a dream or something. I was a little scared, because I knew I was going to do some time over it and stuff, so I don't know, just mainly scared. No matter what a juvenile offender is sentenced to Wabash for, their ultimate destination is the same. After turning 18, all offenders are moved to an adult population, either here or at another Indiana correctional facility. Kevin Henry is serving a 100-year sentence for rape and robbery. Although he's already served 30 years, he remembers his introduction to prison life well. I was fortunate at 22 years old. 
that some older guys took me under wing and showed me how to do time without getting killed. But throwing kids into an adult prison is, is just not a good idea. Valley Correctional Facility, and I'm 18 years old. I ain't been in juvenile system one time, and that's it. I ain't never been detained or nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's my first time ever doing some time for anything. Aurelius Woods has been locked up in the Wabash Youth Unit for eight months. He's serving a four-year sentence for robbery. Now 18, Woods is on the transfer list to be moved to the adult population. I can leave any time. I've been here since October, since I turned 18, and I can leave any time now. For security reasons, kids never know when or where they'll be moving once they turn 18. Only thing I know is they knock on your door at night, they, they tell you pecker things, and the next morning you're on a bus, I guess I don't know what, I don't know what they put you on, because I ain't never left for sales before. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, very much. no. I'm not going to my mom. I miss my family, my mama. My mama always told me, stop hanging with them, go to school. And I wish I would have listened to my mama then, and start learning my lesson now. Everything I done done bad, you know what I'm saying, I think came back around back on me. I don't know, I'm sure every family's got their hardships. Like me and my brother and my sister, we was put through several foster families and stuff, and my mom and dad, they was both arrested and we was taken from them by Child Protection Services and stuff as a young kid. That might have led something on, though. But uh, we was adopted into a pretty good family, you know what I mean? Blade and Benny had little contact with their biological parents after being adopted many years ago. But when their crime made headlines, Benny says he was shocked by what came next. I first received a letter from my dad, and that was a pretty moving moment for me, because I hadn't heard from him for a while. And uh, he was just asking, you know, pretty much for forgiveness and telling me what happened and stuff. And, uh, then I got a letter from my mom next, and she was sitting there asking me for forgiveness and stuff, and that she had a lot of her own demons to take care of, you know what I mean, drugs and stuff she had to fight. I'm sure they do blame themselves, but I don't see it as that way. I see it was my own mistakes. Although contact with their biological parents helped to raise their spirits, the Reed brothers still hold out hope for a face-to-face -face meeting. I seen them through the doors and stuff on the county, but other than that, I ain't seen them talk to them about two and a half years, actually. You can't really adjust to it, but you gotta try and do the best you can. I mean, you just ain't got no freedom. Seventeen-year-old Demone Lewis is currently in segregation at Wabash Valley Correctional Facility for starting a fight. Lewis is one of more than 50 juveniles serving time in this adult prison. Man, it's like being like a dog locked in a cage. There ain't really nothing you can do. Like when I was like 10, got locked up. I got back out when I was like 11. And then I was cool. I ain't never get locked up again till 13. I'm about to be 18. And I've been locked up by 18, 17, 16, 15, 14. 13, I was out lucky. That's all my teenage life. And my mom, she was always locked up too. When she was, when I was young, I can name plenty of times when she got locked up. But probably part, that's probably part of it, but I wouldn't blame that because, I mean, I do, I do it. Lewis is serving an eight year sentence for robbery. When I first got locked up, when I was 13, I was getting told that they was gonna come visit me and lie. But it wasn't that they was lying. It's just my grandma used to tell me it's called tough love. So I guess that was her way of punishing me, like no visits. I never even filled out a visitation list because I knew they wasn't gonna come. I'll have my nights throughout the week or whatever, you know, that I'll be thinking about how much time there is over my head and stuff, and uh, just about what things could have changed or whatever. 
I'd just like the uh, victims of the family to know that I am sorry. And if I could take that back, I would take it back. 18-year-old Benny Reed has been locked up for two and a half years. He's serving 60 years for murder and aggravated battery. Younger brother Blade, now 15, is serving 30 years for his role in the crime. On my way up here to Wabash Valley, I was just thinking about, you know, prison in the movies and stuff. So you'd be expecting things like that. I was nervous though, you know what I mean? First thing I noticed was, you know, all the fences with the barbed wire and stuff and the sun was gleaming on it, shining and stuff. I noticed the guard towers and stuff and all the buildings, you know, it was just a big facility. Something I've never witnessed or been in before, you know what I mean? Staring down a 60-year sentence isn't the only thing on Benny's mind. He says guilt about Blade's 30-year sentence is worse. That's one of the hardest things to cope with, you know what I mean? Because I know it's my responsibility. He looked up to me, being I was his big brother and stuff, and uh, I led him wrong down the road, you know what I mean? As much as Benny hopes to see his younger brother, he fears what emotions may be brought to the surface when they see each other face to face. This ain't gonna change us. Can't change it, son. It was, it was just my, much my fault as it was his, so If we wouldn't hurt nobody, we wouldn't be here right now. I'm Officer Miller. I'm a correctional officer here at Wabash Valley Correctional Facility, and I work with the uh, youth incarcerated as adults. Outside rec. Outside activity for the youth offenders at Wabash is a luxury. By law, they must be sight and sound separated from the adult population. Let's call yard rec. With 2,100 offenders all vying for time in the yard, the juvenile offenders have to take what they can get. It's raining and it's cold. Two more. They're in here for some pretty bad things sometimes, but they're still human and they're still young kids, teenagers. And there's just uh, some aspects of working with a population like that. I have been assaulted working here, you know, a couple times. It's not been anything, you know, too disastrous, but it does happen. And that's something that you always have to watch out for. They've got basketballs. It's not unusual to come in here and they've got different emotions about things. You know, some of them are fathers and they've had babies born while they've been in prison. One of those fathers is 18-year-old Aurelius Woods. My son, he's six months now, you know, and he motivates me every day. Woods hopes to get an attorney and get time cut from his sentence. Every day I think of it, is there anything I can do to try to as soon as I can for his first birthday? That's all I'm hoping for. Cause I missed the biggest day, you know, when he came. And I'm just I'm trying to be there for his first birthday. But for now, his biggest worry is being moved to a new adult prison. You have a 18-year-old or 19-year-old now walking into that type of environment for the first time, particularly ones that are known to be transitioning out of the youthful offender program, and they're well known. I mean, the adult population knows who they are, and they know when they get there. That makes that youth very susceptible to some of the, the games and the different things that the population tries to pull on them in order to get them to do certain things. And if you don't use no, um, you can, they can get into trouble very quickly. My daddy, you know what I'm saying, he been locked up. Mama always told me, I don't want you to take your dad, your father's role and being locked up, and I want you to learn your lesson while you in here. I'm not trying to be like him, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to see my son grow and be there for him and know he got a daddy and know I'm here to support him or whatever he needs. Say, just been pushing it aside, so it's about two and a half years. I ain't seen him and talked to him. For over two years, Brothers Blade and Benny Reed have shared the same prison, shared the same memory of their horrific crime. What they haven't shared is a face-to-face -face meeting. Well, that's about to change. Bats, are you ready for Blade? Have a nice visit with your brother. Always. It's kind of a relief. 
it's been a while, but I probably feel the same way I feel right now. I mean, I'm gonna be happy. Interactions between offenders from different cell blocks is not normally allowed. For the Reed brothers to meet, they have to submit to rigorous security checks. What we'll do is we'll strip them down, and we'll uh, search them, see if they have anything. Then once we search them, they'll get dressed, and then we'll, we'll call them in to go in to, for the visit room. I've got the other uh, read in here. Okay. I, I... Go ahead, strip down. Both brothers will be strip searched before and after the visit. They're allowed only brief physical contact, and their conversation will be monitored by surveillance cameras. That's the only time I've seen them in the two years we've been down. I think about my family a lot, but other than that stuff, I really don't think about none of that. It makes it easier just to forget it, just cope with it. Make sure you give the, your ID to the officer at the desk. While Benny nervously waits for his visit with Blade, back on his cell block, officers receive a tip that weapons are being made in a neighboring cell. No. Okay. Uh, we were called in by the sergeant of this house to do a uh, targeted shakedown shake for this cell because one of the offenders who lives here uh, is bound to a wheelchair, and it was found in a letter, I believe, about the uh, weapon being in his wheelchair. So we are searching his cell. While we were doing this, other officers were searching the two offenders that uh, live here. from the razors. They could use them as anything. They're used for shaving, but uh, they could do sharpening tools, <clears throat> cutting someone, cutting something, various things. They use them to, sometimes to fuse them to a toothbrush handle and use them to cut somebody. Now I need to inform you about the visitation. Visit hours are from nine until three every day. Back on the youth unit, the newest arrival prepares for hard time behind bars. My name is Adam Contreras, 17 years old. It was, seemed like a scary movie. It seemed like, it seemed like all a movie for a little bit, you know. Honestly, I thought it was a joke from the time I got, went and got locked up, incarcerated. The day it was sentencing, it was just mind blowing because I mean, it felt like my life just changed in 30 minutes. When you send out those uh, visit forms, you can send out 12, but you can only put seven in an envelope and not have to pay additional postage, OK? okay. All right. Adam is serving a 10-year sentence for robbery and burglary, but it could have been much worse. I was facing 85 to life. And the reason why they looked at the 85 to years was because of the felonies, what the felonies were. There was violence. There was a, a handgun involved. There was a, somebody had gotten shot several times, multiple times. Then they looked at my background. This wasn't the first uh, shootout I ever been in. This wasn't the first possession of a firearm. Then what really hurt me was the uh, tattoos and the gang relation, and then the alias. That's what hit it all. That's what just sparked the fire right there. Rap sheets like Adams are well known to the juvenile court justices tasked with waving youth to adult prisons, but that doesn't make their job any easier. The children that I have waved over the years, you know, you know them well. They've been in your court many times, sometimes, you know, dozens and dozens of times. It's always painful. It's just always painful because you know that, um, you know, you're putting a child in adult prison. What comes down to me is 
if I have something in the juvenile system and I can keep the community safe, why wouldn't I keep them in the juvenile system? Back when I was in juvenile, you know, I used to hear about people getting waived, but never did I think it was going to be me. And I'm not the good guy out of all this. I'm not trying to position myself as a good guy at all. You know, I need to sit back and think, you know, what, what's going on. This isn't all a joke anymore. You know, I'm, I got 10 years, and 10 years isn't a joke, you know. Even though Adam just arrived in the juvenile block, the thought of eventually moving to an adult prison weighs heavily on his mind. I've, I've had so many people from recently just got out of prison, you know, hey, what's prison like? You know, let me give me a heads up. It's really how you go in there and carry yourself. Be cool, you know, don't get in nothing you can't get yourself out of. And I definitely say, don't borrow something, you know, because people will, hey, since you owe me this, go do that to him. Or go do this, go do that. No, don't do that. You walk into this this world that you know is it's not a joke. And but the thing about it is, is how you pack yourself when you go into that world. You know, uh, of course, you're going to have a little fears. If you're smart, you will. One of the big things is getting into the prison uh, black market, you know, whatever it may be, but that's debt. And in prison, debt is very serious. You know, you don't have someone calling you on your phone, you know, wanting paid. You know, you have someone showing up at your cell wanting paid, you know. First and foremost, they have to come to grips with uh, an inmate code, so to speak. You know, there are certain things that um, we as um, correctional facility administrators and staff require and expect from the population. But at the same time, there's also a code that the population expects of the other inmates and offenders. Even if that crosses the rules against what the staff expectations are, if it's a code that the offender population thinks you need to abide by, you know, for your own safety, you have to go with the offender code. Obviously, uh, you could pay a, a more severe price if you break the, the offender code. Boxler, will they be coming to get him, or how is the procedure? You told me to have him ready, he's ready. Aurelius Woods has been in the Wabash Youth Unit for almost a year. The day he turned 18 at Wabash, he knew his transfer to the adult population could happen at any time. You remember what I taught you yesterday? Don't Say you? no. Huh? Yes or no. <laughs> Today, that time has come. Woods learns he'll be transported to Plainfield Correctional Facility, two hours away. You get out of here, you go home and take care of that beautiful little boy. Yeah. I'm just ready to get in there, do my time, and get out to my family. That's it, you know. I wish you all the luck in the world. All right, Granny. What's happening, bro? Come on. Get ready for it. I'm going to keep my head straight and move on and, and, and go home. Thank you, Granny. Uh-huh. Good All luck. Right. You too. Good luck.
I've got the other uh, read in here. After two years behind bars, brothers Blade and Benny Reed are finally meeting face to face. Attorneys for the boys and prison officials have agreed that visitation might help the brothers as they face the next few decades in prison. They are only allowed brief physical contact and officers are monitoring their conversation. So, it's kind of a relief. It's been a while, but I'm gonna be happy. How you doing? What's up? Not much. How you been? I'm always good, you know? You staying out of trouble over there? Yeah. Look like you lost weight. Three pounds. I'm at like 160 right now. 160? Don't look, it does it. I'm at like 172, 173. <laughs> you shaving yet? Yep. What? They say we look the same, I don't see it. I don't either. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> I don't look nothing like that. Ugly head. Yeah. <laughs> Hell no. You be all right. <laughs> Ain't got much of a yeah. choice. Yeah, and I can live with it, don't I? Mm. Said I gotta live with it, don't I? <laughs> oh. Yeah. When's the last time you talked to Mom? Uh, I called her, I think, last week. Oh, can't wait to see Mom, then. I haven't seen Akeisha for a while. <laughs> yeah, I ain't. I seen him, like, I think it was, what, two, three months ago or something. I know it's been a while for you. You've been on that. Visitation restriction was these. Uh, never know. My mother passed away in 2005. I got locked up in December of 81. So for all those years, the only time she saw her son was in prison. There was a lot of pain involved. Pain that a lot of times doesn't get spoken about. My mother never talked about how bad it hurt her, but it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure it out either. Travis is another inmate at Wabash who knows about the pain he's caused his family. Adam is serving a 10-year sentence for robbery and burglary. Boom, she said, you are now waived to adult court. And all I could do was just stare at my mom while she cried and cried her tears out. It was just a whole disaster, you know, because I knew it was me. I was killing my mother softly. Back then to us, this was the stuff to go through, you know to come into middle school, a whole bunch of police officers, boom, we're looking for Adam Contreras. You know, it just turned a whole bunch of fame on and girls got turned on by it. And, the bad know, boys. Yeah, the bad boys. You know, when you had that, the gun in your hand, you just, feels like you're on top of the world, really. Once you pull that trigger, it feels like it starts to twitch and you can't let go. And then once you, shoot somebody once, or once you fire a gun once. You're like, dang, you've already experienced it. It's nothing really, you know, it's just a loud shot and a boom, you know, someone could be hit. It's messed up, it really is. You can't turn back the clock. You can't put the bullet back in the gun. It just doesn't work. You know, I can be mad at the judge, but <laughs> I put me in his courtroom. If I hadn't been in his courtroom, he wouldn't have been able to send me here. I did this. So why not learn to control your anger a little bit and find another way to express it instead of 30 years later being here, laying here in this rack in the middle of the night, tossing and turning, being mad at yourself and not knowing what to do with it. Today, Aurelius Woods leaves the prison life he has known in the juvenile block at Wabash and transfers into the adult population at a new facility two hours away. Alright boys, I need you to strip. Ready? Hands out in front of you, thumbs down. Let's go, go. Right hand on your belly and raise it to your chin. There you go. Go. I need you to spin to the right. 
right? Stay back. There. That's good. When I got to prison, I had seen a little bit of violence on the streets and everything, but I hadn't been in for three weeks when I passed a guy in education coming downstairs, literally holding his intestines in his arms. There you Woods, step down. Turn that way, and walk out the van. It upset me. I mean, I threw up and all that. Within maybe four months, I was sitting in the chow hall eating supper, and a guy was 10 feet to my left getting stabbed. And to me, all it meant was I needed to hurry up because we were getting locked down. Uh, give me your DLC, please. One eight, one four five. All right. There's nothing cool about that. When when you can make that kind of a transformation in the space of three or four months, there's nothing cool. When you in these rooms, that's all you got is time to think. So if you say you ain't got time to think, then you lying. Something wrong with you, cause. That's all you got to think. You locked down 23 hours a day, and most of the time, 24. Secure 501. 17-year-old Demone Lewis is serving an eight-year sentence for robbery. The past six months of that time have been spent in segregation. Did you ever think you'd end up as a teenager in an adult prison? It's hard to say, but yeah, I knew it. Because I, when I was 13, I was locked all the way up from 13 all the way to 16. So used to it, like, mm -hmm. like my mama, she don't even write me. Never had wrote me, not one time since I've been here. Not one time. When was the last time you saw or talked to your mom? I talked to her when I was at the county, like around April or something, last year, about a year ago. The last time I saw her was when I was out, which is 2009 or 10. I can't really. Blame it on my family history, because I know most of the stuff that I do, I do it like it's my fault. And I think a lot of it is our fault. And by our, I'm talking about those of us that are wearing this and in prison because we weren't there for those kids. We weren't out there to help raise them. And this is what they've had to, to model themselves after. For those that are already here, get your head out of where it's at. And, and figure out what it is you need to do to get your life back on track, get your education, work on whatever you can work on to get yourself out of here and stay away from this. This is not, this is not the kind of life you need to be thinking about. I mean, I'm a real nice kid, man. If you really get to sit down and know me, but people probably think I'm a bad person because of things I do, but they got to think about what the things I do and why I did it. It's because I don't got nobody here bonding for me. I got a wish. Wish I could get out of here earlier than I can. <laughs> wish everybody that got problems and make better for them. That's when you think about the whole thing. I think it's pretty up, don't you? Well, including that we were only. 13, 16 at the time, hell yeah. Well, no, no, we know better now, huh? Yeah, yeah. For Blade and Benny Reed, razor wire fences at Wabash have kept them in separate worlds. Though they face 30 and 60 year sentences, they've never stopped fighting for the chance to see each other again. Today, a face to face visit is their first in two years. My mom, dad, my sister come and visit me. Usually at least once a month or so. That's good considering it's a two and a half hour drive up here. I've only had one visit, but I've also had disciplinary. I've lost my visits for disciplinary reasons and stuff. I'll probably be receiving their visit as soon as they, my uh, six months is up, so. You, you still hear from uh, my real mom and dad? I ain't heard from them over a year, damn near. After that first couple letters from my real mom. I was expecting one every now and then, but after a while, it just uh, it ain't gonna rise. Yeah, well, you expect that with time. People start falling off, you know what I mean? Yeah. You gotta make best with what you got, huh? Yeah. Oh. Do our time. Do what we can to get out. Yeah, they.
very unbelievable for myself, you know what I mean, and I'm sure for my family. I'm, you know, I miss my family and stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty hard. <laughs> so you lose it. Yeah. All right. Well, it's good seeing you. Yeah. Make sure you stay out of trouble. I hope to see you over on the little three side, you know what I mean? Yeah. Hope to see you on the out. Yeah. Hopefully. You'll be out from me, so when you do, you know what I mean? Get out there and stay out. Yeah. All right. Well, love you too. So yeah. Stay out of trouble. So, I'm going to sit high, right? Yeah. You know, follow. I think a lot of kids think that this is where you get your, your credibility. They think this is what makes you cool and all that. This is not cool. There's nothing about living in a bathroom in a closet with another man that's cool. You don't get that many chances anymore. They can't let this be their life. Yeah, I'm wondering like every night, what made my dad keep coming back to this prison, you know? So now that I'm 18, I'd like for him to come to me and tell me what made him keep coming back, messing up and doing time for what? And he could uh, try to be in my life. You Woods? Yes, sir. Woods, what's your OC number? In Juvenile Block, you don't really see what my, my daddy went through or how it is like that until you get to the real prison and see how it really is. Aurelius Woods will spend the next three years inside the Plainfield Correctional Facility alongside 1,600 adult offenders in an open dorm setting. He's gonna walk in that cell house scared to death. I couldn't even imagine going into a dorm setting like that. This is an ugly world, you know? And your, your mind is just on overload constantly. It's mentally exhausting. All right, fellas, go and grab the property. I very clearly and vividly remember those first few nights, all the sounds, the doors slamming at night, the people yelling. Um, it's going to be a difficult transition. Since I've been in the game, I don't lost 16. Me personally, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna get out and go to college, you know what I'm saying? Try to make something of myself. Because I ain't trying to come back on the road again. I'm just gonna be by myself, get my GED. If I can't, I'm still here and try to get home.